How are you doing? Welcome again to my video. Today we're going to do another privilege escalation video or privesc. And basically we're just going to continue to task number 10 in the Linux privesc arena. So as we already discussed in the last video, several of the sudo exploits can be used to gain a higher privileged user. So what about the LD preload? All right, so LD preload is another very interesting variable that we can go and read about on this page. If you wish to do that, you can just go ahead and type Linux LD preload in your Google uh, search engine and pick basically any 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 um, of the descriptions. <clears throat> it kind of tells us that this is a, a trick that is useful to influence linkage of shared libraries and the resolution symbols functions at Right time. So if you wish to understand this a bit better, you should probably read this article or another one that is similar. All right. So let's go ahead and look at the um, LD preload, prebesk exploitation. So we are already logged in. We're tasked to do a, a sudo tag l, and basically that is the one that we um, used to see which kind of, you know, commands we can run as sudo and we also have something mentioned up here with ld preload and a lot of other binaries which we're going to ignore for now the one we're going to look for is we noticed that the output uh, we, from the output we noticed that the ld preload environment variable is intact okay so how would you how would you say intact well it, it is present you know it's not like it can be destroyed or anything but you know it's a weird way to say it so <clears throat> What we're going to do is um, basically open a text editor, create a small C program, and if you understand what it does, you should look up the different commands here. Um, but in the end, it, it kind of just spawns a new shell. Now, it tells us to save the file as a C file, and then we're going to run the um, GCC, which is a, a compiler for C programming. And we're going to get the output file here. And basically, with that, we should be able to get a higher privilege shell on the box. So let's go ahead and just copy the code here. There we go. Let's touch a file. Let's call it x.c as... Well, let's just... Touch another file called x.c, <laughs> nano into x.c, paste the code, there we go, and we have it right there. Let's go ahead and just delete this, because then it doesn't make any noise. Next, we're going to run this command here. Now, I know when you, whenever you do some, 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 some exploits and stuff, <clears throat> it's very common that you do something, some commands, you know, you're, you're, you're giving from... Um, let's say GTFO bins or you read an article and you know you just use the commands and they basically work. The two ways two ways you can do it. You can try and understand every single exploit you're doing to the absolute max. No doubt you will learn a ton of things. Um you will learn how to program, you will learn how to, you know, know how to exactly how, for example, environment variable works, and you will, in this case, also learn about the LD preload a lot more. You also learn how to compile, but many of the things, you know, could be stripped down to saying, what is essential in this exploit you should know about? What is essential for you to know about LD preload? In order to just basically research it whenever you need it and try different things out. Just knowing that LD preload is a bad thing to have intact in the environment variable is enough for you to actually go go ahead and verify even further if you can do any sort of exploit. So let's go ahead and copy this uh, command here. Let me just, just paste it in for now. And now we're gonna do this. So after we did it, we basically, um, let me just go ahead and, and show you what we got. So if I do ls, we see that we have the file here. And inside the temp folder, 
we have the X so file, which is the compiled file, uh, and other stuff like useless, <laughs> very funny. And that is the one we're going to uh, point to when we're going to use the sudo ld preload and say this is the one we're going to use. So let's go ahead and just you know paste that in, and now we root. So so basically all this is just you know wow okay we, it really worked, you know, yeah. It is a little while, but then again, I suggest you go ahead and, and, and read up, up, up upon this if you wish to, to know it. Um, I'm not really sure how much you can... Could you really remove the Apache call? Could you do that? Mm, no, you cannot. Bad username, you do need to apply something. Could it be basically any command? It could be basically any command it would seem like even find would would be a a suitable you know answer because i am as you can see root and just basically pick anything so i couldn't really see the relevance for apache here but you know depending on what you have access to maybe it should be one of the commands here in in, in so we could try we do not have tail as one of them so we could try we could try to clear, exit, clear again, and do tail. And now we're being asked for the uh, sudo password for TCM. And of course, this is not going to work. So so basically, what, what you need to do is make sure you supply one of the uh, files that, you know, do not require well, in this case, no password, but sudo privileges to execute. So that is the um, the exploit. All right, so it's completed, and this kind of concludes the sudo group of exploitations when it comes to privesc in this particular room. I'm not saying it concludes anything in in <laughs> like for real. It is just for this room it concludes it. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna create a new video, and the one's gonna be about SUID files, which is gonna be the next one uh, covering the Privesk stuff. Take care.